we present Down Payment on Death. A thriller in five parts. Adapted from his own novel by Jim Eldridge. With Dinsdale Landon as Art Gorder. Part One, A Shot in the Night. It was September when I quit the British Secret Service. The leaves were falling from the trees, and I was sick of the espionage business. I'd started in a desk job and ended up killing people. The trouble was the department thought I was good at it. That's why I had to quit. Arthur J. Gorder, professional assassin. My friends call me Art. <laughs> well, not that a professional assassin has many friends. For the rest of September and all through October and November, I wandered around, wondering which line to go into next. But what can you do after you've been a professional killer? Instead, I sat in my flat, drank too much, and kidded myself that something would come along. It was one night in December that something did come along. Ah, with a bit of luck, that'd be the blonde upstairs inviting me to look at her etchings. Coming! Hello, Gordon, old man. Clark. What do you want? Well, I happen to be in the area. I thought I'd pop in on the off chance, you know, compliments of the season and all that. Yeah, huh? you never did anything on the off chance. <laughs> oh, honestly, old man, you really are a suspicious beggar. Um... Look, uh, can I come in? It's uh, it's a bit cold out here. Yeah, yeah I suppose so. <laughs> ah, that's better. <sighs> you know, I think we're going to have a white Christmas this year, old man. Yeah, you didn't come here to talk about Santa Claus, Clark. Now, what do you want, hmm? Or is it the department? You've not exactly got the Christmas spirit, Gordon, old man. <laughs> I, um, I don't suppose you'd fancy offering me a drink, would you? Whiskey? That's very decent of you. Well, how are you finding retirement? A bit quiet after the old game, eh? It stopped being a game. My days as a hired killer are over. Uh, just in case you did have another reason for calling. Oh, cheers. Cheers. Oh. Mm. That's, um, that's a bit melodramatic, isn't it, old man? I mean, a hired killer. We're all civil servants, really. We've all got jobs to do. Oh, now, come off it, Clark. It's a nasty business, however you package it. And it made me sick. That's why I quit. <laughs> Where is your sense of patriotism? In this glass I'm holding. Yes, that's all very well, but, you know, you were our best. Well, if you say so. You know, Freddy's sort of taken over as number one. It's not quite the same, though. Yeah, well, Freddy was always very good. He lacks a conscience. <laughs> that's why he's good. <laughs> oh, and guess what? Reggie finally got married. Oh, which poor woman's taken him on? Sandra Sinclair. Do you remember her? She was Yes, that, Department um... F. Good operative. Mm. I worked an assignment with her about, oh, was it, uh, two years ago. Yes, I remember, that uh, that mid-channel job. Yeah, that was it. Very nice girl. I well, pity she's got herself saddled with Reggie. So it's all change at the department, eh? Oh, no, no, not really. Mm. No, it's the odd new face, but it's the same old job. Usual stuff, you know. Yeah, I know. We do get the odd tricky one, of course. Oh, naturally. Yes. Yes, you know, only last week the big white chief came in to see me. He landed me with a real beauty. Apparently, there's this... Ah, <laughs> sorry, old man, talking shop again. Hardly part of a Christmas visit. <laughs> I'll drop it. Thanks. Still, it's just talk, isn't it? Well, it's none of my business. Right, right, nice. You're out of it, Ma. Um, do you think I, I could have another? Oh, yeah, sure. Ah. Well, cheers. Hmm. What a nice place you've got here. Oh, yeah, it suits me, Books. You know, I wouldn't have said you were a great reader. <laughs> Funny. You know, you work with someone for years, you think you know them, how they live, but you don't. At least not everything. Thank God. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it, it's like this job the old man's given me. One of our agents, reliable, working exclusively for us, or so we thought. 
You know, he's been selling our secrets on the open market for the last 15 years. 15 years? Mm. Oh, a bit slow, aren't you? Well, as it was, we only found out by chance. We were checking on a suspect, nothing to do with his business, and we came across this bank account in the Channel Islands in the name of Peterson, and it showed an amazing movement of very large sums of money. It didn't sort of feel right. So we got a bit nosy. Oh, I'll bet. Anyway, we checked and found that Peterson was an alias for our so-called reliable agent. And further discreet inquiries confirmed the um, the situation. Mm, a double agent. Mm. Well, it's happened before. Yes, yes. Still, it's a it's a tricky business. Yes, well, the department should be able to handle it easily enough. Ah, not that easy, old man. You see, only a few people know. The great white chief himself. Myself and a couple of people right at the top. So you have to be careful. Right, right, yes. If he got out to the rank and file, I mean... You see, he's a senior man. It's a question of internal morale. Yeah, I can't see the problem. And that's why we're putting this out to freelance. Oh, really? It's, it's discretion, you see. Oh. A decision has been made at the top that the problem has to be eliminated outside the department, and the job must not be traced back to British intelligence. Well, the usual dirty money stuff. Right, yes, yes. Payment and use notes. 200,000 of them, plus expenses. Oh, expensive job. Oh, on this one, it's worth it. Whoever takes the job has to complete by Wednesday. Wednesday? Mm. Well, that's only five days away. Yeah, it is a bit tight. Yeah, well, I... <laughs> it's damn near impossible. You think so? No, no, look, with that deadline, I'm an important target. I mean, you'd never get anyone to do it. Yes, yes, yes. A pity you've retired. This sort of operation's right up your street. Yes, but I have retired. Yes, yes. So, here I am with 200,000 to give away. And the only man who's good enough to earn it can't take the job. Who's the target? Oh, you're interested. No, I just wondered if it was anyone I knew. Oh, come on, old man. I can hardly disclose well, I that. Ju I just I? wondered. I mean, that price makes it nearly cabinet level. Oh, way off the beam, old man. Oh, well, it's not important. I'm not even guessing. Charles Allweather. What? The target is Charles Allweather, deputy head of MI7. <whistles> yes, well, you see the problem. It's 200,000 plus expenses. Well, I'm not interested. 200,000 for just one job. What are you earning now? I mean, you're out of work. Now, look, Clark... I've had my belly full of killing. You're the only one who can do it, and you know it. Look, I've got half the money here. Now, get out, you... Clark. You come in here full of Christmas spirit, which I suspected was eyewash, and you're already trying to buy me back. Now, what the hell do you it's think you're playing? It's not a question of buying you back, old man. It's just just giving you something to think about. Hmm? Call it an act of faith, if you like. There you are. It's all here. In this case... Hundred thousand pounds in used notes. Look, I don't want it, Clark. Take it with you. <laughs> you know, a man will get robbed at this time of night. I'd prefer to leave it here with you. I said I'm not interested. Well, think about it, old man. Hmm? Give it a day. Give me a ring tomorrow. You know where to get me. Well, thanks for the drinks. I'll um, I I'll see myself out. Bye. I'd gone soft since I'd left the department. Three months ago, I'd have thrown Clark out after the first drink. Or maybe I wanted to hear about the job he had to offer me, just to reassure myself or something. Maybe that I was still considered the best killer in the business. A hundred thousand pounds in used notes. I was just standing there, looking down at the case, when... The bang could have been the motorbike backfiring, but I knew that it wasn't. Clark was lying beside his car, shot through the head. The street was empty. I should have phoned the police or maybe the department, but with my record and a hundred thousand pounds lying on the dining room table, no one would believe I had nothing to do with Clark's murder. I had to get out of this. I searched through Clark's pockets and found his car keys. I dumped his body in the back, slid behind the wheel, and started the engine. That's when I heard them. That was all I needed. 
to be picked up by the police in possession of a dead body and driving that body's car. I had to get away fast, but not so fast. I get pinched for speeding. I slid the car out of Edgware Road and into Oxford Street. Now this had to be a put-up job. Someone had followed Clark to my place, shot him and then phoned the police, leaving yours truly in the hot seat. <sighs> well, if I'd been a bit slower, the police would have found me bending over the dead body. The important thing now was to dispose of both Clark and the car. <laughs> I had weighted Clark's body before dropping it into the river. Now the next problem was getting rid of the car. If it was a put-up job, it was a cert the police already had the registration number of the car and were looking for it. We got a visitor, Joe. Hi, Joe. Hi, Ben. Hello, Mr. Goulder. Long time no see. Not trouble with a new car, I hope. Afraid so. Sounds all right to me. Oh, it goes all right. But it's hot. It needs a respray and a change of registration. Well, well. Rumour was that you'd given up the old job. Well, the rumour was right. This is just, well, it's something left over. Yeah. What colour and registration do you want? Well, I'll leave that to you. You can have the car in exchange for the lift. Where to? South America? No, Hampstead. Lewis's boutique. No problem. Bit late to go shopping now, isn't it? How hot's the jam jar? Very hot. Right, Ben. You better take Mr. Calder to Hampstead. I'll get the spray operator set up in number four shop and get started. Come on, Mr. Calder. Right. We'll take the jag. Art. Hello. Hello, there is. Have you got company? No, the coast's clear. Come on up to the flat. Thanks. How's business? Oh, the usual for this time of year. Everyone rushing in for last-minute Christmas presents. Do you fancy anything to drink? Mm, have you got any whiskey? You left a bottle here last week. I didn't drink it that fast. You'll find a space and sit down. To what do I owe the pleasure of this call? I, uh, I might want an alibi for this evening. Oh, I could tell by your expression it wasn't social here. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. What's up? A face from the past. Can you tell me? Well, the, the, the old job... But you it, finished with that. What did they want? Well, at the moment, it's best if I say nothing. That way, you're not involved. Just so long as you remember, I called on you about eight and stayed all evening. Sure. Um, what did we do all evening, if I'm asked? Well, let's hope they're gentlemen and they don't ask. If it's your old crowd, they won't be gentlemen. Oh, thanks. Look, tell them I spent the evening trying to seduce you. But you kept me at bay. Oh, was I successful? I hope not. What time did you leave? Well, let's see. Now, it's 11 now. Just after 11. Oh, this is a real flying visit. First time in a week you call and now you're off again. I've a good mind to tell you to get your alibi somewhere else. Well, how does um, just after midnight sound? Mm, mm -hmm. Better. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> When I got back to my flat, it was two in the morning. I paid off the taxi and walked into the entrance hall. There were two of them waiting for me. By the look of them, they must have been waiting for a long time. They looked cold, tired, and ready to take it out on somebody. Mr Gorder? Yes? Do you mind if we have a few words with you, in private? What about? There was an accident here earlier this evening. Oh, really? We've seen everyone else in this block except yourself. We'd just like to ask you a few questions. What sort of accident? Was anyone hurt? We don't know. That's what we're hoping you'll help us find out. What, far away? Possibly if we could talk it over somewhere more comfortable, it might be easier. Your flat? I looked from one to the other. I'd seen eyes like that before in my shaving mirror. Oh, it'd be no use trying to stall them by asking to see their search warrants. I mean, these characters printed their own. And if I refused to take them up to my flat, they'd just take me up there and use my head to push the door in. Then they'd find a hundred thousand pounds in news notes. To a policeman, that's suspicious. To MI7, who knew me, 
Oh, there would be a hundred thousand reasons for locking me up and throwing away the key. But I had to keep them from entering my flat. Summer. Well, Mr. Gordo, we haven't got all night. Well, uh, uh, just give me a few minutes to get the flat tidy. I, it's in a bit of a state at the moment. Well, don't worry about that. I'm a bachelor myself. Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, my place is really in a mess. We see, I mean, I had a bit of a party last Somebody night. Somebody up I... there we shouldn't see. No, no, not at all. Uh, come on, th this way. I led the way up the stairs, listening to the sounds of their feet, judging their positions. As I reached the top of the first flight of stairs, I swung round sharply and kicked out. Oh! My foot caught the first man in the stub and he fell back on his companion. The other man was clawing for his gun, but he wasn't fast enough. Oh! They fell to the bottom of the stairs in a tangled heap. Before they could sort themselves out, I was past them and running for the entrance, when suddenly... Hold it right there, Gorda. I stopped. You don't argue with a man with a gun. And the man with the gun was the deputy head of MI7. Charles Allweather. Are you sure he's tied up nice and tight, Roberts? Like a chicken, sir. We don't want him trying any more funny business. No chance, sir. Good. Keep an eye on the door, Ferguson. I don't want any interruptions. Yes, sir. Sorry we have to do it this way, Mr. Gorder. Commandeering your flat like this. But you didn't leave us any option. Get stuffed. Ah, I'm disappointed in you. We're old colleagues. Just wanted a friendly chat. Ask a few questions. Oh, no, come on, for God's sake, let me loose and get out of my flat. When you've answered the questions. I see you've done well for yourself since you left the department. Yeah, I manage. Where did this money come from, Gordon? A friend left it with me to look after. Ah, you've got some trusting friends. Was Clark one of them? Clark? From the department. Remember? You work with him. So? Why should he want anything from me? That's what I want to find well, out. I don't know what you're talking about. No? No. We had a tip-off. Clark was here tonight. Yeah, well, tip-offs aren't always right. It was a phone call to my office. I took the call myself. You shouldn't believe everything you hear. Said Clark was seen coming into these flats. Why was he here, do you think? Must have been visiting someone. Search me. We've checked everyone else in the block. They're clear. Just leaves you. Now, what have I told you? I hadn't seen Clark since I left the department. I wouldn't believe it. I spent the evening with a woman friend. You can check it. Pick up that phone and ring her. The tip-off also reported a shooting outside these flats. Oh, really? Well, there's a lot of it about. Nasty business. There's a lot of blood out there on the pavement. But no sign of a body. It's disappeared. So I have to be involved because I used to work for the department? Give me a better reason. Look, I told you. I wasn't here. I spent the evening with a friend. Go ahead, go on and we'll check it out. I don't have to. You've had time to fix an alibi. Oh, well, if you don't believe me... I'll... I tell you what I believe, Gorda. I believe Clark is dead. I believe that's his blood out there on the pavement. And I believe you might have killed him. No. I said might have killed him. I certainly believe Clark came here tonight to buy your services with this money. What services? As a killer. Oh, whether I quit killing when I left the department. <laughs> no one quits. The word is that you've gone freelance. Well, that's not true. There's a hundred thousand pounds here in this suitcase. By tradition, a freelance gets 50% in advance. Who's worth 200,000? You've got it wrong, or whether I'm not freelancing. 200,000, Gorda. This isn't just some man in the street job. Clark wouldn't be able to pay that kind of money. Not for his own personal but vendetta. It's not Clark's money, I told you. Well, it's not department money. I'd know about that. So, where do you think he got it? I said I'm looking after it for a friend. So if it's not department money, I reckon it must have come uh, from his other employers. Agree? No, no, I, I don't know what you're talking about. His other employers, Gorda, the other no, side. No, I'm sorry, but you've lost me. Clark was a double agent. He's been playing both ends against the middle for years. Now, I want some answers. Who was Clark working for? Who have they hired you to kill? No one's hired me to kill anyone. <laughs> Look, Gorda, we've known one another a long time. We've worked together. We've always been on the same side of the fence. I hope we still are. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it, with me tied to this chair. Well, what else could we do after the way you jumped Roberts here? Look, I'm not after you. Not you personally. You've retired. 
But you and I both know that no one gives us a tip-off unless there's something in it. OK. I don't think you're involved, but Clark was. Now, all I want to know is what Clark said to you this evening. And I can't tell you because he wasn't here. Listen, Gorda, I want information from you, and I know you've got it. You're not in the department anymore, so if you get roughed up in the process, who's going to complain? You'll just be someone resisting arrest. On what charge? There doesn't have to be one. You know that. I just invoke the Official Secrets Act. Now, what happened to Clark? <laughs> How do I know? Oh, dear. Roberts? Ow! Oh. We could make it a lot nastier for you, Gorda. You know that. You're up the wrong tree, or whatever. Oh, dear. Roberts? You're being very stupid, Gordon. Or are you? I wonder. Maybe you're working for the other side, like Clark. Oh, I want that. Yes, it adds up. After all, Clark still worked for the department. Could be the other side didn't trust him, he knew too much, so you were brought in to kill him. Oh, look, you're out of your mind. Am I? You can't prove anything. I can make it stick if I have to. Face it, Gordon. I've got you always. Fact. My tip-off saw Clark come here tonight. He was carrying a suitcase. This suitcase. Fact. My tip-off saw the shooting. He saw the car registration number, Clark's car. Gorda, I know you saw Clark tonight. And because I know that, I'll take the woman who's giving you your fake alibi and break her in five minutes. Now. All right. Clark was here tonight. Ah, oh, now you're being sensible. And he did offer me a freelance job. But I refused it. Now, what's the money for? He left it for me to think it over. Oh, come off it, Gorda. No one leaves a hundred thousand quid for someone to think about. But Clark did. And who is the intended victim? We didn't get that far in the discussion. Gorda, don't take me for a fool. Either you tell me now... Or I get the heavy mob to drag it out oh, of you. Oh, you've got it all tied up, haven't you, all weather? Of course. I'm the law. You know, my guess is that Clark hired you to kill me. Well, why should he want you dead? Let's say I had another tip off. Oh, if you knew so much, well, why go through all this circus? I am right. I was the target. <sighs> yes. Good. I like to have my information confirmed. I'm glad to see you don't go in for false heroics. It's not worth it. I never did when I'm not involved. You're involved, Gorda, to the tune of 200,000. I told you I turned it down. Where's Clark now? The bottom of the Thames, near Limehouse. Why did you kill him? I didn't, and I didn't see you did, and that's the truth. Was he alive when you got to him? Look, nobody stays alive long with a bullet between the eyes. Why did Clark say he wanted me killed? He didn't give a name. Just said he was acting as a courier for an unnamed client. Why do they want me disposed of? I don't know. I wasn't taking the job, so I didn't ask. So, you know, it, uh, it would be safer for me to have you killed now. I still don't believe you haven't gone freelance. Well, even if I had, I'd be a fool to kill you after this. I don't underestimate you. Clark was only the errand boy. The people who sent you this money are still around. They'll want value for their money. I intend to check out a few things on friend Clark, and that's going to take time. Now, if I let you go free and leave you with this money, I could be signing my own death warrant. No, what are you going to do? Hmm? You can't keep me tied up here indefinitely. No, 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 no. I'll just leave my men here with you for, a, uh, let's say, a week or so. To see you don't step out of line. Well, why only a week? No, that'll be enough. By then, we ought to know something. Oh, and I'll uh, take charge of this money. Roberts? Yes, sir? I'm going back to the office now, but I want you and Ferguson to stay with Gordy here for a few days. If he gives you any trouble, you know how to handle him. Yes, sir. And if he gets away, I'll bust the pair of you. Any questions? I don't think so, sir. Right, I'll keep in touch. And you remember, Gordy... Be sensible. Just make sure you do. Should we untie him? No, let him sweat for a bit. 
I haven't forgiven him for that kick in the guts. Oh, you're going to even up the score now I'm tied up. You bet your sweet life I am. Let him be. We've got a week to take care of him in. It had been a long time since I'd been in a situation like this, and my memories didn't help me at all. One thing for sure, I wasn't in for a week of dazzling conversation. Are you expecting anyone? No. Nope. Wonder who it is. What? If you open the door, <laughs> you'll find out. Watch it. You better answer it. It might be one of my accomplices. Watch him, Ferguson. I'll see who it is. Right. Now keep quiet, Gorda, or I'll kick your teeth in. All right, I'm coming. Look out, Ferguson! Ah! What the? That was part one of Down Payment on Death, a thriller serial for radio adapted by Jim Eldridge from his own novel and featuring Dinsdale Landon as Art Gorder. Clark was played by Manning Wilson, Louise Lenehan by Francis Jeter, Ben and Roberts by John Croft, Joe and Ferguson by Peter Kreis, and Charles Allweather by Glyn Owen. The programme was produced by John Fawcett Wilson.